Hello everybody and welcome back to the Taha Send YouTube channel for another weekly roundup where we basically review everything that's happened to do with Reading FC over the past week. Before we get into the video, make sure you like, but most importantly, subscribe and turn that notification bell on so that you never ever miss an upload. So we're going to have to kick off with going through Bournemouth 4, Reading 2, uh, the early kickoff yesterday in the Championship. Uh, we took the lead after four minutes, Luka Chow with a penalty uh, after Begovic got taken down. Uh, took down, sorry, Alpha Samedo uh, after he trickled into the box. Uh, then we took doubled our lead just before half time. Sonny Luco with a nice finish into the bottom right corner after Obi Ajari just dribbled through a couple of players and set him up perfectly. Uh, and then from the second half onwards, it just went downhill. 56th minute, Dominic Solanke from close range from across um, makes it a 2 1. And then three minutes later, Bournemouth a level through Arnout Danjuma, who is played through onto his left foot and just hit it near post past Raphael in. And then in the 77th minute, Bournemouth then take the lead from 2-0 down. They've now, now come to 3-2. Lewis Cook with, I believe, his first goal for Bournemouth. Brilliant goal as well from the edge of the box. Uh, top left corner of the unside, unside of the bar um, is a brilliant finish. And then it just made things even worse. Ball was played back to Raphael in the 89th minute and he had a look buffle with Dominic Solanke. Just tried to get the ball from way, away from him. Couldn't quite do it, and Dominic Slanky won, and then just tucked it home into an open net to seal the deal for Bournemouth, which moved, which I believe moved them to top of the league. Um, not sure who's top of the league now, but we're definitely not. We've now moved from top to six. A lot to take away from yesterday's game. First half was really good. Only two shots on target, but two goals. Classic Redden, obviously, taking barely any chances, but when we do, we do take them. Um, but yeah, no, a brilliant first half. Sonny Luco obviously played very well. I loved his second goal as well. The passion that he showed in his celebration, it obviously meant a lot to him. His first goal for us in two years. Um, and you can clearly see that that was a lot, uh, a, a lot of pressure going off his shoulders. Um, yeah. But yeah, so obviously that was really good. And then second half was woeful. Um, it's been, nothing seems to have changed. I don't get how... You can go from doing so well in that first half to then doing that poorly in the second half. Obviously, Bournemouth turned up and we knew they were going to after they were 2-0 down. They're a quality side, only just relegated from the Premier League with the likes of Lewis Cook, David Brooks, Arnold Danjuma, all these types of players that they had in their team. They're clearly going to come back and do something about it. And they did, but I don't understand how we can be that poor in certain, certain situations. It's just... It's really bad and it's it's very annoying and very frustrating because it feels like we've just gone back to normal. Like, we literally finished the game. I was angry at the time because it was a poor showing. The last, especially the last 20 minutes was horrific from 2-2 to 4-2 within 20 minutes and the way we conceded both of the goals and then we couldn't even get back into the game. There was not, there was only like one clear chance. Uh, I think it was a header um, from... Alpha Tomato, I want to say. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but should Ren, Ren thought it should have gone in. I haven't seen the replays. It might have, might not. Um, but yeah, it was just horrific. And the, word, the way like we couldn't really get the ball out of, from through midfield um, that last 20 minutes, uh, Lauren Rinomosa just couldn't quite um, get it out, which I thought was really poor. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's really disappointing to go from such a good start to where we are now from uh, saw the ridiculous out of we conceded the least amount of goals in the whole 92, the first seven. And then since then, we've now conceded the most in, in goals in four games, which is absolutely ridiculous. This is not good enough at all. Um, it's just ridiculous. Uh, I can't I can't quite believe what is going on right now. That game was a, was a game of two completely different halves, but I just don't understand how you can do go from doing so well in the first half to doing so awfully in the second half. It doesn't really make sense. Um, but yeah, but one person that has come under a lot of criticism actually after yesterday was Raphael. Obviously, he's been, he was brilliant for us last season. Um, I believe he won either fans player of the season or I think it was fans player of the season he won, um, which was thoroughly deserved. I voted for him last season. I thought he was um, brilliant. Started off the season really well, obviously, as did the whole team. Um, but the last four games, obviously, we've shipped 15. And after that, Howler in the 89th minute yesterday against Dominic Zanke. Uh, he's now been called into question to be replaced and a lot of people are calling for Luke Southwood to come into the team. And there's Raphael's an experienced goalkeeper. He won't be making these issue, uh, errors 
that often, but this is a rough patch for him. I don't think a lot of people have now started to say that he's not actually that good of a goalkeeper, but it's like, well, hold on a minute. He's only been doing this for like four games. Like he's been here for the whole of last season. Off the top of my head, can't think of any clear errors that he made last season. And even before these last four games, like the only ones I can think of are the Coventry, Coventry's third goal, um, in which he probably should have done a little bit better. And then this Bournemouth goal, and obviously he hasn't been great the two games before. Like, you just, I don't think the criticism is warranted. I think it's just, he's just in a rough patch form, but I wouldn't say he's just an average goalkeeper. Um, a lot of people are saying that there are just a number of championship goalkeepers that are now better than him. And on current form, obviously, yes, because obviously he has made those errors in the last four games. But overall, I still think Raphael is one of the best goalkeepers in the league, and there's no doubt in my mind. Um, and it's just really disappointing to see a player like him getting this much criticism because he clearly loves enjoying. Uh, he, he's clearly enjoying himself uh, at the club. Um, he loves being at Reading, and um, it's nice to see a goalkeeper like that. Obviously, we have got quite lucky over the goalkeepers with goalkeepers in the last couple of years with likes of Emmy Martinez and Ali Alhabdi. Um, but yeah, I think Raphael is probably one of the best goalkeepers I've ever seen play for Reading. So it's a bit sad um, seeing him come under this criticism, but. Does he need to be dropped? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, because as much as I want to see Luke Southwood play, because he's one of our own, I don't actually know if he's quite good enough for the championship yet. I feel like there are, when I, when we've seen him play in cup games, he it seems, it seems good, but like I don't know if he's really championship quality yet, maybe League One at the moment. But obviously, if we give him a run of games, that may change. Um, but... I'm not sure if Raphael should be dropped just yet, but it might be good to just kind of take him out, take the pressure off for him, give a one of our own uh, a league debut, I believe it would be, um, and just give Raphael to, some time to reflect um, and then hopefully come back better and start pushing into the team. Um, but yeah, overall, yesterday was very disappointing. Um, I think with Millwall now on Wednesday, it's, that's going to be a really tough game. Um, Mill were a really good side they drew 1-1 to Cardiff didn't even have a corner for all the teams you'd expect not to have a corner in the league it wouldn't be Millwall so uh, that was quite surprising but yeah you'd Millwall's going to be a tough game on Wednesday and I'm hoping that we can get some sort of I, I just want to get a point at least I want to be in the top six bracket by the end by uh, next Thursday uh, because it's this the form we're on right now in the, we need something um, I will take anything right now, to be honest, because it's just it's just so weird how we've gone from going so well to just being so poor. And I just can't quite fathom it, to be honest. But I'm used to us being this bad anyway. So, like, I, as I was saying earlier, like, I was angry um, at the result. But then within 10 minutes, I was like, I'm just used to this now. It's normal. Like, I, I'm used to being, like, oh, Redden lost again. Oh, we played poorly again. Like, it's... It, that this continues to happen too much. Like every team within like two years will have a good patch where they've done quite well in the league. Ours lasted seven games from the last three or four years. It's ridiculous. I'm used to us being bad, but I don't want to see it. It's really annoying and really frustrating. And I feel for Redden fans as well, having to sit there at home and watch it. It's it's really annoying and really frustrating because it just we've got a quality squad, but we just can't seem to get it going. A lot of people are criticising Poundovic as well. Um, I think there is definitely some issues to be fixed because there's no way that you can go from the first half being that well to the second half that one, uh, that badly. And that's happened the last three or four games. Surely you would have... Surely there's something going on there that you would, that you would have pinpointed and then tried to fix. It doesn't seem like he's tried to do that at all. Um, but I still... I don't think there's... The mention of him getting sacked should be anywhere near the fact that we're, if you had said to me that we'd be sixth um, after the November international break, I would definitely take it at the start of the season. So as much as a bad, as much that our form that we're in now is terrible, I'm still happy with where we are. I don't mind being sixth. It's disappointing uh, from what's happened the last couple of games, but I don't think he deserves the sack yet at all. There are some decisions that I think could be changed. I think there are a couple of things that need to be uh, gone over, but I think also this season, the, the lack of depth is showing. Um, but it's nice to see that a couple of 
players are coming in and kind of proving themselves. Tom Holmes, for one, Sonic Luco as well. It's nice to see those guys coming in and playing that well. Um, speaking of Tom McIntyre, actually, uh, we were meant to have nine subs yesterday, but we only started the game with eight. Now it's because Tom McIntyre is now having to self-isolate due to when he was on the on international duty with Scotland's on the 21s. One of the players that, uh, that, he, that he would have been in contact with has got COVID as well. Um, so I believe Tom is now having to self-isolate, uh, which is a shame. But um, luckily, he's not too much of an important player at the moment. Uh, so hopefully we won't miss him too much. Yeah, ran over for that Bournemouth game, I think. Uh, the only other thing that really happened this week was Gabriel Rosho finally found a new club and he signed for championship rivals Luton. Um, I think... Obviously, he played well at right back for in at the end of last season. Um, obviously, that's not his main position. Main position is centre back, but I haven't really seen him at centre back because we only ever played him at right back. So I can't pass comment on how good he is at centre back. But I'm sure if he's that good at right back, he's excellent at centre back. Um, I think he'd be a really good option for a club like Luton as well, especially on a free. Um, I think it's a very good deal, and I wish him all the best. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. We've got Millwall. Uh, away on Wednesday, seven o'clock kickoff, and then with an early kickoff again next Saturday, Bristol City at home uh, on Sky. Uh, so I'm hoping this time next week I'll be talking to you uh, in front of my camera, and hopefully it will be a lot more positive. But this week is a poor result away at the Vitality Stadium. Hopefully we can pass a point. Hopefully we can be a bit more be a bit more positive. Uh, this time next week thank you very much for watching the video if you haven't already please like the video comment down below your thoughts on the Bournemouth game what do you think Pavlovich should do do you think Raphael should be dropped uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and turn the notification bells on so that you never ever miss a video for now guys see you later